Hey guys, Mike here. So obviously kind of a flat day today. Uh, it was interesting to see that cruise lines were up double digits, Roblox up 8%, ARK went green for the day. You know, very risky things were actually green today and always, it's always interesting to see that in this kind of market. Uh, it's almost like people are positioning themselves with like high beta stocks because they're anticipating a big move up or something. That's the only reason you would really do that. But, you know, when I, the big thing that happened this morning was we were up green 1% on the queues pre-market and then what happened ppi data came out and of course as i was sending the members their you know daily news briefing and stuff you know what happened was you can see right here i'll just read it off to you that's what they got uh ppi rose 8.5 percent which is slight deceleration 8.7 in august but the month over month increase is supposed to go 0.2 percent it went 0.4 percent and the market did not like that but the one thing i really liked seeing was or didn't like seeing it but this is what you got to pay attention to about the consumers right PepsiCo, what's Pepsi do? They end up not only beating earnings, they raise guidance again for this year, right? And what are they saying? People are still paying higher prices. That's what's increasing their sales. You know, their sales grew by 9% on average. Prices up are almost 17%. And they expect their full year organic revenue to actually increase by 12%, not 10% because we keep paying right and these are the kind of things in pepsi they have they have so many brands underneath them that are, i think the third largest water bottle water company in the world and so but they you know i promise you, you got three or four items you don't even know is under the pepsi umbrella okay but these are things we're going to buy it doesn't matter if we're without a job doesn't matter we're going to be buying chips and colas because people are hooked on those things bottled water all that stuff all right we're going to be buying it and so these are things that do pretty good when things get rough because people will always buy. It's not a house. It's not a car. It's not a speedboat or something that costs a bunch of money, right? And they can keep raising by two cents, five cents, seven cents on those chips, and we don't even notice it. But they're selling so many of them, their, their sales are going up, right? And so that's something you got to keep watching out for to watch when Coke reports, um, you know, Johnson Johnson, these kind of companies. Uh, to see what you got. PNG is what I meant to say, actually. And so, you know, that's what we got to watch out for. And another thing you're seeing right now, which is no surprise, and I'll show you why, is all these 52, new 52 week lows, right? You got Microsoft, Meta, JP Morgan, PG, uh, NVIDIA. Hey, I said it right that time. Verizon Wireless, Salesforce. And you just go down the list and it's a who's who, right? AMD, Citigroup, uh, Duke Energy. And so why is this happening? Well, there's a bunch of reasons, but here's one. This is an index that measures like the financial conditions, the tightening, and how easy it is. Well, shocker, but it's tightening up, right? We're at levels now that we saw in the 2020 crash, uh, 2016, 17, 2008 crash. And so obviously you see the big spike above that when the recession actually hit and the market absolutely tanked uh, when the banks went under. But yes, it's getting tighter. Look at that big move from 2021 to now. That is a huge move. The only time you see a bigger move in this chart is during the 08 crash. That's when the banks basically almost went under. The other is, and I hadn't seen this in a while, they finally updated it, margin debt. Again, this is a lagging indicator coming back from August, so we're a month and like two weeks behind. But you can see, I mean, it had a pop right there. You see that pop? That was basically in June is what happened. So people started buying on margin, pushed that thing up really fast, really high, started taking on some risk. But you can see it's heading down like crazy, right? I mean, this is in billions right here on the yearly change, and I've showed you multiple times there is no bottom and no major uh, move coming in the market unless margin absolutely increases. You can see it going back to 01. You can see it going back to 08. Uh, you can see it 2020. You can see it 2018. And, you know, this is the percentage. Obviously, we've had bigger drops than this, but you kind of see where we're heading, right? I mean, you saw what 01, how far down it got, 08, how far down it got. And so if we keep heading, that, that's where we're going to be heading to. So this will be a lagging indicator, but I told you something I'm watching. And this obviously shows it plain as day, right? When you see on here, going back to any recession, when margin starts to turn up, right, in a, in a positive angle, the market goes. And it's just plain as day. Right there, you see it again as soon as it turns. Because that's just, and especially now, we use more margin than anything. You just, all you got to have is a pulse now to get margin, if you're wondering about that. And please hit that like, subscribe button, and share the video if you get anything out of this, guys. I really appreciate it. And that leads me into a topic, is, is the big topic of discussion, right, which is employment, right, which the Fed wants to get up. And there's two things I want you to notice and I'm about to show you, right? And then again, the members will get way more detailed videos on this and some other topics that tie into it because you can't just look at unemployment as a lagging indicator. But I want you to see, one, what happens, how fast unemployment rises, right? When we start going to a recession, that we, again, we won't know we're actually into it, right? The, the group that actually comes out, they'll come out like a year later 
after we're in the real recession. Some people think we're in a recession now. Uh, the reason why I don't believe that is simply because you don't see unemployment spiking and you're going to see that in the charts. The other thing is to look at how, what the number was on unemployment before a recession hit and compare it to what we're at now. And you'll see how staggeringly low we are right now. And if you go back, I went back to the 90s. You know I normally don't go back before the 21st century because of internet and everything else, but I'll do it. And you see we're at 5.5, five, right? We're I mean, kind of just up and down, up and down right here, going from like 5.2 to 5.5. Five. And as soon as we hit hard times, boom, you know, up to 6.8. And it didn't take very long. And you can see what happens. You, just, you, you know things are bad because what happens to the, the market? It tanks, right? I mean, here's when it actually kicked in. And you can see right here, we end up dropping on the S&P around 19%, 134 days, so roughly uh, four months is when it went down. That was a very... I guess in a way you say quick, short um, recession or whatever you want to call it. But then we move forward to 2001, all right? And you can see historically really low. Actually in the threes at one point in time, getting up to 4.3, which is still extremely low before we hit the recession, okay? So we're, we're bouncing anywhere from 4.1 to 3.9, okay? And so 3.9, we get to 4.2, and then we hit hard times in the market, and boom, skyrocket at 5.7 very quickly as you can see and of course in the market what happens you can see right here and there's other things that happened right here but you know we end up tanking right the market goes down 12 percent 154 days about the same time frame uh, as that happens another 18 percent right there in like 62 days but there's other things going on there as well when you want to make out and then of course overall it's it's way down right and then when you go to 08 Right again, look at the numbers here. We're like bouncing between like 4.5 to 4.7, and we got up to five, and then boom, it just skyrocketed. That's when everything went to hell in a handbasket. Right there, no way, this is like the worst one. And you can see in the market, obviously, we started to crash and burn. And again, we don't know we're in the recession. Economic stuff is happening badly, right? I mean, sales are coming down, people are getting laid off, all this stuff is happening. A lot of stuff was going on to cause this. But if you look, what did you not see? You didn't see unemployment at 3.5%, right? Which is what we're at now. You didn't see it at 3.7%. Mostly they were in the fours and fives. That, that's normal, okay? And so that's what I'm saying. Historically, this is a very low unemployment rate. And that one is caused by the way they calculate it now versus the way they used to calculate it. Because uh, it's a, a crazy calculation, which I went over, I don't know, I guess a year or so ago or whatever. And it, it's just nuts. I couldn't believe the way they calculate it. But uh, the other thing is, you know, a lot of people working part-time jobs now. A lot of people working at home now. A lot of people just left the workforce to do something. I don't know what in the world they did. I have no idea where everybody went. And I'm talking about all, you know, auto mechanics, everybody. I don't know where they went. They just didn't come back. So, you know, that's that. But you see also how fast it can go up when we hit real bad times right now the i know people i know it feels like bad times for a lot of people and trust me i don't discount that at all and you know i get that what i'm saying is and don't think i'm not trying to be i'm not trying to be a cold person i'm just saying realistically pe the restaurants are still busy right people are still traveling all right i mean that's that's just the truth and the matter of it okay people are getting two jobs to survive but they're still surviving you know you saw people are still buying chips and bottled water and pepsi and everything else and you're going to see other earnings come out, right? I mean, the reason why Walmart and Target got it so bad is because their inventory management sucked. Not because people aren't in their stores. I go to Walmart. I go to Target. You know, people are in the stores shopping, all right? And that's just the way it is. And so, and when they get the inventory stuff fixed, they just bought stuff that people didn't want anymore. They moved on to something else and buying grills and everything else, right? And so, that's, you know, the demand destruction just isn't there, right? The unemployment rate going up isn't there. What the Fed is doing right now just hasn't been wholeheartedly felt. We, we feel inflation way more than you feel the interest rates because with interest rates, as a normal person like me and my family, if I'm not going out and buying a car or a house or a boat or anything that has a, an interest rate, and, and we pay our credit cards every month, we just don't feel that. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're going out and buying a house and a car or you're refinancing your home or you're, you don't, you're one of those people you don't uh, pay off your credit cards every month and you have to pay that interest expense, yeah, you're feeling it. You really do, but so that that's a different story. We we aren't in the bond market. We're not taking out debt, so therefore we don't feel the roll off the balance sheet, right? And so, but our companies we work for do, and so that way you may feel it. And how? Because they start cutting wages, laying people off, all that good stuff, making you be more productive. You're gonna do Jimmy, Jimmy, and your job now. We just lay Jimmy off. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's how you're gonna feel it. So, you know, this is the one. That's why a lot of people are projecting. 
And again, the members are getting a video on this to understand what I'm talking about. But I project in summer or either the end of 2023 for an official actual recession where things go to hell in a handbasket, right? We can we can see it, we can feel it because people are getting laid off, right? Business is slow, restaurants are not full, Walmart is not full, that kind of stuff. People aren't going out there and buying grills anymore, okay? And they sure ain't buying big ticket items, okay? And that's why you see a lot of these auto stocks going down, no matter who they are, whether it's Tesla, GM, Ford, any of them. Because one of the first things to go when things get tight, nobody's buying a car. Who wants to buy a car? You know, so you want to make sure you can pay your rent and your mortgage and your utility bills, right? Nobody's buying a house in a recession. You know, nobody's buying boats and RVs and all that good stuff, right? I mean, I mean, the rich will probably, but you know, normal folks do not usually. And so that's why all that happens. But I always want you to see it, and you can pause it a little bit and look at that and stuff. And I'll come out with um, some more videos kind of detailing this stuff because I always say this right here this this is the time guys if you're gonna learn anything educate yourself this is the time to do it not in the bull market everybody's a genius in the bull market but in the bear market you know for me it's about learning this stuff and not just somebody telling me something some talking head on MSNBC or CNN or Fox or whoever you know talking it's me seeing it and going hmm okay I got you I see what's going on you know I'm studying oil right now right because oil is a big thing and I'm trying to figure out how to position myself on that because, you know, I'm looking at the you know, leverage ETFs on it and everything else and trying to figure out, okay, when is oil dropped? All, just all the stuff and historical data, not just listening to somebody talk to me about it. Because you can see all those firms are on different uh, ideas of what's going to happen to oil. Every one of them, they're supposed to be experts at it, right? One saying it's going to drop at 60, another saying it's going to rise to 120, another saying it's going to be at 100. None of them know, right? And they're supposed to be uh, the smartest ones in the room on this stuff. But you know, I just, I can look at something, I like a visual, when I can look at something and go, oh, okay, I see what's going on. Because again, we aren't going to get the official deal about being in a recession until like a year later from that group that's, that officially does it, right? They get grants from the government and people give them free money and stuff to conduct what they do. But, you know, that's just, that's just the way it is. And like I was, I'm be showing the members this other indicator I'm tracking now that I found that, you know, again, it hasn't turned down. It hasn't turned down at all, and it definitely turns down in a, in a real recession. It turns down fast in a recession because it tracks unemployment, right? It tracks wages. It tracks sales for companies, earnings, all that stuff. And, of course, that just all goes hand in hand, right? So, you know, that's why. So it hadn't turned down yet. And so that's something I'm looking at as well, which, you know, I'll bring you all one day too as well. So, anyway, hope you got something out of it. Hit the like, subscribe, button if you did. Let me know what you think. PPI, I'm sorry, not PPI. CPI is going to come in at tomorrow. Do you think it's going to be above inline in expectations or actually below expectations? The, all the financial firms are thinking between 8 and 8.2. I think every one of them have between 8 and 8.2. So that's where they're at. Uh, and we'll see. Uh, I personally will tell you the truth. I don't have a clue what it's going to come in at. And I don't really care about the headline. I'm looking at um, core. You know, core is what matters to me. That's what matters. Should matter to us, right? That's the rents and stuff like that. So the other stuff we didn't. Nobody really can control anyway, and the Fed can't control it. So just let me know in the comments, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. No matter what, it's going to be a fun day. Okay, so just buckle up. See you later.